What's going on, guys? Right on. Thanks for coming out. So, uh, you know, I live in Las Vegas, been out here for 30 years, and uh, my favorite part is the out-of-towners, you know? They get into Las Vegas Boulevard, and their minds are blown. They say, oh, castles and fountains and yard-long margaritas? This place is crazy. Vegas, yeah! <laughs> it's adorable. But we see the same thing every goddamn day, so the shine has worn off. But if we go to the Midwest, bam, I'm now the tourist. I'm a wow! <laughs> Is that a squirrel? <laughs> that woman's wearing a skirt and I can't see her asshole. This is weird. <laughs> Bars closed, this place is crazy, Ohio. <laughs> you know, and Vegas ain't the only place that relies on tourism, right? There's Hawaii, you know. And Hawaii's beautiful, but they never show you this on the brochure. Hawaii has also got a gigantic homeless problem. Oh, my God. It, the homeless is now the official state bird of Hawaii. It's crazy, you know what I mean? But the tourism committee, they stepped in. They wanted to do something about it. But instead of actually coming up with, like, a program or something, their idea was to, was to walk up to every homeless person and give them a one-way plane ticket back to the continental United States. <laughs> And the only question I have is, is what homeless person in his right mind would ever take him up on that offer? Because if you ever find yourself homeless in Hawaii, you have reached the top of your profession. I mean, it does not get any better than that, man. I'm sorry. You're a CEO. Congratulations. The point that I'm trying to make is being homeless in Hawaii is a thousand times better than having a home in Detroit. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, guys cold out there. <laughs> Vegas, though. I'll tell you this, my favorite part about Las Vegas is the fact that we get these residencies, you know? We get the greatest bands in the world. They'll be here for, like, months on end. You know, back in January, we ended up getting Aerosmith. I love Aerosmith. But here's the thing. When you get a residency, it's on the downturn of their <laughs> career, man. Steven Tyler is 76 years old. <laughs> He's gonna be up on stage going, Whoa! But then it got me thinking, like, what's going to happen when today's rock star is 76 years old? And there's only one. She walks the walk. She talks the talk. It's Cardi B. Oh, God. I love Cardi B. But she has got lyrics that can make the Wu-Tang Clan blush. I'm telling you, man. Like, she's got a lyric. And if you know it, sing along with me. I want to gag. I want to choke. I want you to hit that dangly thing in the back of my throat. Yeah. There were some ladies singing along with that. And to those ladies, I just want to say, I hope you get to see your kids, because I know you don't have custody. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, that is, a, that is an every other weekend mom type of thing. You know what I mean? They're not covering that song on Kids Bop. Let's be honest with ourselves here. But the thing is, though, is it got me thinking, like, Cardi B's so hardcore, you know? And what's going to happen when she's 76 years old? She's got a song called Wet Ass Pussy. Wet ass. Could you imagine her singing that song at 76 years old? People in the audience are going to be like, Cardi, the only way that thing is still wet is if it's in a diaper. Take it easy, Cardi. Come on. His lips are chapped. Let's get that pussy some Burt's Beeswax, Cardi. Come on, baby. We got... Right on the taping. Oh, man. But, you know, and I'll tell you this, I am over the internet, too. I don't like the internet, you know, because all the smart people are bought and paid for, and you see it in the advertisements. Like, I saw this advertisement online. It was for a mattress company, and it said, uh, this, it said, scientists claim that if you get a full night's sleep, that will have the same effect on your brain as does winning the lottery. <laughs> no. I've never won the lottery, but I have gotten eight hours of sleep before. And not one time have I ever woke up, was like, I need to tell my boss to go fuck himself. I mean, oh my God, I feel great. But there's this, there's this fascination with vanity online, you know, and ladies, you're the biggest culprits of this. Look, I understand if you're snapping a picture of yourself, you want to capture the moment, I'm fine with that. But some of you are posting these overtly sexualized photos, borderline pornographic, which I would normally have no problem with. But these same models still feel compelled to throw in an inspirational message in the same pic? Have you seen this confusing shit? They'll be on Instagram. <laughs> Chase your dreams. Like, what? <laughs> I am going to go back to school. Thanks, titties. You know what I mean? Like, 
Like I saw this one chick, she posted this video of herself twerking on her bed, and yeah, the booty was a clapping. <laughs> and the quote that she put was, you can buy a whore, but you gotta earn a queen. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this chick's bedroom, and I'm like, uh, queens have a box spring for their mattress, okay? <laughs> like, let's, let's get that credit score up, Khaleesi, what do you say? <laughs> Married, been married for a long time, you know. And here's the thing, after you've been married for a while, you gotta find new ways to spice it up in the bedroom, you know. My wife, she's like, look, I want you to be a dirty doctor. I'll be the naughty patient. I was like, ooh, I hope you got insurance, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I was ready. <laughs> Coming. So the time has come, she's laid out of the bed, just looking delicious, and walks Dr. Gooch. <laughs> Stark ass naked holding a clipboard. <laughs> like, ah, so Mrs. Han, I'm just going over your chart right here, and it says you got a serious disease. So I'm gonna go ahead and write you a prescription for penicillin. <laughs> and she's all, uh, well, I'm gonna need a second opinion. <laughs> the hell does that mean? She's like, you said it was serious, that's what I would say. I'm like, I am not a real doctor, you know that. You know that. We wouldn't be banging on a futon if I was. <laughs> you know, it's great, I love my wife, and I love her so much, especially when I compare it to my ex. You know, here's the thing, like, yeah, it's, look, I, I got a divorce under my belt, man, and me and this woman, we, we didn't like anything together, you know? Like, she was into hair and makeup, you know? And like, she talks so much about it that I think I could do it now, ladies. Like, if you give me a brush, I think I could do it. I know how you get them cheekbones popping. I know how you do the cat eyes. I know how you do the smoky eyes. And when you do it wrong, I fucking notice. Oh my God, I, I can't even watch porn without going, oh, fix your roots, bitch, really? I mean, come on, how am I supposed to? You know, it's crazy, because uh, you know, after the divorce, you know, you find yourself you know, if you've ever been divorced, you know, you know, there's this moment where you don't feel loved, you feel kind of worthless, you start doing some things that are a little out of character. And there was like a couple of months where I was just watching way too much porn. I was so sad, you know what I mean? And the thing is, is I was, <laughs> I was watching for the plot. That's when you know you got real problems, you know? I was like, what? Bridget got enough on her report card. Well, how's she gonna get out of this pickle? You know? Because now when I watch porn, I watch porn for the comedic value. And if you're watching porn for something funny, you will never be let down. Like, I was watching this scene, this chick, she was getting it. She kept yelling out the same line. She's like, oh, yeah, you like that little cookie daddy, don't you? Oh, you like the cookie daddy? Oh, well, come and get the cookie. And I'm like, if I'm the male performer in that scene, what's stopping me from going, oh, yeah, me like cookie? <laughs> Give daddy that cookie. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Comedy. Comedy's hard, man. Comedy's hard. You know who's got it hard in comedy? Women. Women have it hard in comedy because their male counterparts think they're being funny at inopportune times and they're just being dicks, you know? Like, for example, I got a friend of mine, she's a comic here in town and she's very funny. She's getting ready to jump up on stage and this is how the male comic brings her up. He's like, your next comic coming to the stage. Mm. I ain't gonna lie. She got some big ass titties. Yeah. Brings my friend up on stage. She crushes, does her job. The very next day, her and I are having lunch and she's venting to me. She's mad, you know. She's like, I can't believe you would do that to me. You don't sexualize me. She, you treat me with the respect a comedian deserves. She goes, How would you like it, Gooch? How would you like it if somebody brought you up on stage by going, Oh, your next comic coming to the stage has got the juiciest dick in the game? I would love that. Are you kidding me? Like, bring me up like that every single time. I'll never bomb again, okay? It doesn't matter if the front row is laughing or not. I'll simply pull vote over them with my giant cock <laughs> on my way to the manager's office while I will collect a check. But with comedy, though, comedy's a life of peaks and valleys, you know? Like, right now, uh, you know, I'm here at the Las Vegas Arts, and, and you guys are an amazing audience. You're here for the live comedy. I love it. But you gotta understand something. Next week, I'm not... Here, next week I'm booked at the scariest coffee shop in North Vegas, and <laughs> my only audience is four tweakers, like, give me all your copper. 
I love Kid Rock. <laughs> and the thing is, though, the reason why I bring this up is you never know what you're going to expect, you know? And, and like, especially when you do these bar shows, you know? Like, for example, like maybe six years ago, I was doing this bar show and I was killing, you know, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> and the audience that night, were, they were primarily black. Now, the reason why I bring that up is the second I get off stage, the one and only other white dude in the whole joint decides to walk up to me and break protocol. He walks up, he's like, hey, man, <laughs> you were great. You know, I was thinking, us white boys, we got to stick together, huh? High five. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, <laughs> we only talk like that in prison, Chad. Put your fucking hand down right now. <laughs> and I know what you guys are thinking. Well, Gucci, you are kind of skinny. If you were in prison, would you join an Aryan gang for protection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that's not something I want to say out loud, because one thing you can't tell by looking at me, if there's one thing on this planet that I hate, you guys, I hate racists. Like, ooh, I hate racists. <laughs> but I hate being raped more, you know what I mean? Like, so much more. And if I have to lie about being a racist for four or five years, just so I can avoid a one-way trip to Pound Town, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Because on the outside of prison, guys, I'm not a bad looking guy, maybe a six or a seven. Some people say I look like Tom Brady with AIDS. I'll take it, I'll take it. But inside prison, this right here is the body that brings all the boys to the yard. So I already know how it would end. I'd be up in the prison yard throwing up plates of 10, just ah. And that's when some monster walks up to me, hey fish. Suck my dick and I'll give you a pack of cigarettes. That's when I go, ah, 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 ah. You can buy a whore. <laughs> but you gotta earn a queen. <laughs> you guys been great, take care. <laughs>